In today's video, I'm gonna be checking out the brand new Fitbit Charge 5 Fitness Tracker. We're gonna go through the unboxing, full setup and more, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, my name is Jeff, and on this channel, I do all sorts of different tech reviews, including smartwatches. And today I am getting the chance to check out the really cool Fitbit Charge 5 newly released. We're gonna be going through uh, the unboxing and all of the features, including seeing the full color AMOLED screen. This thing says it has up to a seven day battery life, uh, as well as going through all the different features of setup to help you get the most out of your Charge 5. And I will be leaving links down in the description below to timestamps so you can jump to whatever parts are of most interest to you. But otherwise, this is a pretty in-depth setup review of all the features that you can do with this fitness tracker. So here we have the Charge 5 and just came in from Fitbit. So let's take the packaging off. So let's just take a quick look at the box. So we've got the Charge 4 with advanced fitness and health tracker and it includes a six month premium trial. And we can see here that uh, it's the Charge 5 and it includes small and large sizes uh, for the bands. Fitness tracking redefined. And as we move to the back, we've got the Fitness or the uh, Fitbit Charge 5 with 24 7 heart rate and active zone minutes, stress management score, and the EDA sensor heart health notifications, built-in GPS for pace and distance, and then health metrics like breathing rate, and it'll track your SpO2 readings. So I wound up going with the graphite stainless steel case and the black band, and we're gonna just pop this open and start exploring. So let's see, Fitbit has uh, pretty nice packaging. Just to open this, they have a little uh, arrow down in the bottom, so we're a little pull tab. You're gonna pull that off. That seems to just pop off this little plastic on the bottom. And if I had to guess, usually you can pull from the bottom to get it open. Box just kind of pulls out. You can kind of see that flashy Fitbit logo that's on the top. Oh, and it looks like you can access the inside right here. Get my thumb under that and let's just pull this open. Ah, and there it is, look at that. So this is the Charge 5. Um, and then just a quick note, if you haven't seen my Charge 4 videos, if you wanna do uh, a little bit of research on the Charge 4 and how that looked with unboxing it and just kinda what was included, you can take a look at those videos. Those are also gonna be linked down in the description below. I've reviewed all sorts of Fitbit products. So there is the band. And they put like some packaging in the middle so that it'll hold its shape. Let's pop that out. And our protective cover, let's pull that off. It's got that shiny screen. Let's just do a close up overview of what this looks like. So, here on this side, you can see you have. A little panel there, we have our screen. There's no physical buttons or anything. It's amazing how slick they're making these trackers look now. There's another touch panel that's gonna be on that side. And you can see the sensors that are on the back. And we'll do a more close up look of some of these features. This would be the Fitbit band. This has the same design as the Versa 3 and the Sense where the band just kind of folds underneath. And let's see what else is in the box. And as we do in all the videos on this channel, we've hidden Tinker. Tinker is our little hidden robot that looks just like this guy on my shirt. And if you happen to spot Tinker popping up somewhere during this video, take note of the timestamp or the amount of time into this video that you spotted Tinker popping up and let me know that timestamp down in the comments section below along with your best comment. And if you are the first person to find Tinker in this video, we'll put your name on our Tinker Forward Hall of Fame page, as well as I will give you a shout out in one of my future videos. We've got our arrow here to kind of pull this out. And we have power. 
and we have style and another arrow here to just kind of open this uh, it even shows here power and bands let's see if does this pull out oh look at that all right so we've got our power cord let's pop this out so I believe this is the same cable as the same charging cable as what came with the Lux, which by the way, if you want to check out the Lux videos I've done, those will also be linked down below. Very similar to the Charge 5, but there are some differences. You can see the button right there for if you have to, to uh, if your uh, Fitbit gets stuck. Essentially, that's how you restart it since there's no physical buttons that are on the fitness tracker. A look at this other piece that slides out, and here is our other band. You just kind of get a glimpse of what the band is going to look like. So they do give you a quick start guide. They recommend that you charge it up to 100% using the charging cable and then you can download setup and sync and then if you have any issues you can jump over to fitbit and they will be able to help you out and then we have our product information guide so it's always fun when they leave you little messages inside the box and it says you're new to fitbit download the app create an account and then have an account tap on the account icon to get set up and they even give you a little welcome to the Fitbit family. If you have questions, let us help. You can visit their website for friendly one-on-one -on -one support before returning to your retailer. So they want you to go chat with one of their reps before you just go and return this if you do happen to have problems. So if we pop this off, so the band that it comes with on is the smaller one, and then we've got the larger one. And I'll throw it on my wrist so we can also take a look at what uh, sizing looks like with these bands and then on the back of these bands at the very ends you can kind of see there's an s for the small one and uh, l for the larger band just to indicate it so if you flip them over you can see that so as it indicates in the instructions let's go ahead and charge this up you'll notice that on the charger there's these little contact points and those need to match up with the charging contact points that are on the back of the watch. So I'm gonna just take this and see if we can't stick that. Oh, it's magnetically adhering itself to the charger. And just like that, I got a little logo uh, signaling that it is charging. And now I'm getting a connect to Fitbit on my watch. So we can see that once I've plugged in the Charge 5, it gives me a area to set it up. So we're gonna go ahead and click on Setup. And so it's asking me here, it says switching. There's a Fitbit 3 Versa 3 connected uh, to your account already. So instead of using that Versa 3, I'm gonna switch to the Charge 5. Now, if you don't already have a Fitbit and this is going to be a new Fitbit uh, or your newest uh, uh, entry into the Fitbit world, you are going to need to download the Fitbit app and you can do that from the uh, Google Play Store, you can do that from the Apple Store, uh, you just go and search for Fitbit. In the Fitbit app, uh, you'll see here that it wants me to switch to this Charge 5. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It gives me the uh, privacy policy, all this fun stuff to read through. It's going to track you and everything that you do. It's going to track your steps. It's going to track like your SpO2, your skin temperature, your sleep information. Uh, so they they use that information uh it says here, we use the information we receive to deliver our services and prove them and research. So just be mindful that, you know, Fitbit, Google, which owns Fitbit, they're tracking everything that you do. And in order to use their stuff, you have to accept. So it's got me charging up the Charge 5, which I'm already doing. And it seems to have found the device. So it is going to, from this point, give me a four digit number and we can see that this is just a unique number so that your phone or tablet can pair itself to your uh, charge five so i'm going to go ahead and enter that and so after entering that in it's going to see here if it can connect getting a little uh, notification on the tracker that it is pairing so it timed out it tried to pair and i missed the little pop-up here on android so we're just going to try again so it is not finding it because I missed that little dialogue of connecting. 
Well, I just canceled out of the pairing process. And uh, then from that point now, it says that I might have limited connectivity with the Fitbit. We'll see how that goes. It's asking if I want to buy the Fitbit protection plan, covers cracks, damage from accidents like dropping, spills. I'm just going to say not now. Update your Charge 5, a new software version is available and may take up to 40 minutes to install. Make sure to keep the Charge 5 charging. So I'm gonna go ahead and update what needs to be done on the Charge 5 and let's see if it will do that. So it looks like it's downloading and uh, I'm gonna let this download and we'll come back when it's done. So from this point, the update is complete and let's go ahead and continue. So it says, try it on. It's the moment your wrist has been waiting for. Wear your device loosely enough to slide it up and down on your wrist. And during workouts, try wearing it higher on your wrist for better fit. If you experience discomfort, loosen the band. And if it persists, give your wrist a break by taking it off. So to wake the device firmly, double tap on the screen. Let's try that. Hey, there we go. Or rotate your wrist towards you as if you were checking the time. Swipe left or right to access apps like notifications, exercise timers, and the EDA scan. Swipe up from the clock to see stats. Swipe down from the clock to access payments and quick settings. And swipe from left to right to reach the previous screen. Keep swiping until you reach the clock face. Then it gives us some wear and care tips. So clean your band and wrist regularly with soap free cleaner. If your device gets wet, remove and dry completely after your activity. Take your device off from time to time. And so we are all set. Let's see if we can explore some more about our Fitbit Charge 5. So since we have the Charge 5 set up, from this point, I want to plop it on my wrist. And so this is going to be using the band that came on it, the smaller band. So I'm able to just slip it over my wrist and now this is the smaller band. It's pretty snug on my wrist and I'm in that first little uh, dot to push through and let's go ahead and sneak this underneath. And so that band is going all the way underneath the other band for my wrist and I'll just kind of show you. So my wrist is seven inches in diameter in measuring it. And with the smaller band, I am at the last hole, but you can kind of see how this looks on my wrist. Let's go ahead and try the larger band. And for switching bands out, Fitbit has their quick release system, and you'll see these little clips on either side if you want to switch these out with a sportier band or maybe a different colored band. And you're going to use your fingers to just pull back on these clips. So we're going to pull back on that one. It kind of makes a clip noise and that loosens up access to the band. You can then take your new band. In this case, it's going to be the larger one. And I'm just going to push it in where the other one was. And you'll hear a clip. You'll see it clip back in. And now I have installed that larger band. So for me, on my 7-inch wrists, this larger band pretty much goes up to that last, uh, that last hole. And I know on the smaller band, I was on the last uh, hole the other direction. So I guess my wrist is kind of right in the middle between uh, being just a little bit too big or on the last tick for the uh, small band and about as small as you can go with the large band but here's an example of what it's going to look like on my wrist you can see this large band is wrapping all the way up almost to the tracker itself so honestly i think i'm going to stick with the small band on my wrist so let's pop off just because I, I like to take a look let's pop off that other band and uh no we're not going to do that right now let's there we go Back to our, our main screen. This is really the meat of the fitness tracker. I mean, this is your Charge 5 right here. So small, fits in the palm of my hand. You probably lose it very easily. But with no bands on, this is your Charge 5. And if you are finding some value in this video, take a second right now, smash that like button as it helps out this video as well as this channel. So let's check out all the uh, functions on the uh, Charge 5. If I double tap the screen, that's gonna wake it up. That's also how you return to the main screen on this fitness tracker. Now, if you swipe up from the bottom, 
you're going to see everything from your battery percentage, the date, and then we have uh, things like our steps. We have the distance that we've gone. We have our active zone minutes, and we've got the amount of calories that we have burned. And uh, in addition to that, you get more of a snapshot of your hourly activity. You can see here your heart rate. Uh, the amount of sleep or the sleep score that you had and right now there's no score because we haven't used this yet but those are all different things you can see essentially this is your Fitbit uh, today giving you all that stat information if I double tap it takes me back to that main screen so to access the different apps that are on your tracker you can swipe left or right uh, let's swipe to the left and we'll see notifications. So since this is hooked up to my phone, I'm going to see notifications that I get. And if you tap, so I just got an email here from BizTimes Milwaukee. Um, it's giving me kind of a snapshot of what's in that email. And I can read, eh, you know, a good part of it. That's from 39 minutes ago. I've also got the option where I can delete it. I can open it on my phone. And after doing that, uh, that actually opened up the notification on my phone. If I keep swiping to the right, I can see exercise. And uh, if I, I have run, if I swipe up, now I have bike, swim, treadmill, weights, interval workout. Those are all the different exercises available. If I was going to start a run, let's see here, let's just tap and uh, it'll say GPS connecting and then you can just go ahead and hit start. That's actually going to start your run and we can see pace, we can see it's timing it. Um, I've got the option here where I can pause it. So when I pause uh, from that point, it gives me an area where I can finish uh, or return to my run and then it's giving me all the stats about that particular run. So let's go ahead and finish. That's going to finish that run and again give you all the stats and information we're going to go to done so those are exercises we also have alarms so i can tap to add an alarm uh, we could do three and then 55 like pm alarm is set so we've got an alarm on here and then you've got options where you can turn that on or off uh, you can have it repeat so one time every day certain days so that's kind of fun we're going to go to done. Um, we've also got smart wake. So we're going to just leave that for now. Um, so we've got an alarm set. It'll go off uh, at 3.55 tomorrow. I can also set another alarm. We've got timers. So we've got countdown. We've got a stopwatch. So you have those on the fitness tracker as well. We can do an EDA scan. Uh, it says three minutes, tap to start. And then that takes us back to our main screen. Let's try the EDA scan. So now I've got the fitness tracker pretty snug on my wrist. Let's go ahead and tap to start. What is EDA response? Uh, tiny electrical changes uh, in your skin due to stress, excitement, etc. Your Fitbit can detect them. The calmer you are, the fewer responses you should see. So I'm going to gently hold the sides of the device. Those are those little panels we saw before for three minutes. Remember to keep still. All right, so here we go. And I guess I'm going to hit start. Stay still, gently hold the sides. So as soon as I do that, it is going to start timing me. So we'll go through this process. Okay, so how do you feel? Reflect on your mood after each session. Very calm, calm, neutral. I, I don't know, I'd say I feel uh, calm. Let's do calm. I'm well, very calm. That's like me sleeping. Um, EDA responses. So 28 total responses. Your responses were on an upwards trend. So heart rate uh, starting was 77, and let's see here, ending with 75. Uh, I said my mood was calm. Way to go, one out of five mindfulness days. So you do this for five days. It fills in that little ring for you. Hot tip for more impact, try another session after a breathing exercise. So I'm gonna hit done, and that is doing the EDA scan.
So if you swipe down from the screen, that gives you the area where you can make payments and you can store your credit card in the device using payments. And then if you go to like a Starbucks or any place that accepts contactless payments with those NFC uh, readers, then you can just pay right with your fitness tracker, which is very convenient. There's also a do not disturb mode that you can turn on or off. Uh, as well as a sleep mode, which you can turn on and off. And then right now, screen wake is set to auto. Uh, it's got a water lock. So if you're going to get this thing wet, um, essentially the water is going to tap all over the screen and make it do all sorts of crazy stuff. You can turn that water lock on so it doesn't do that. And then we have access to our settings. So let's run through all the different settings. So under settings, we've got display settings, and I've been waiting for this here because uh, one of the things is gonna be a screen wake, a screen timeout, which is set to default. Just for purposes here of showing you things, uh, I'm gonna set this from medium to uh, see if we can increase it. And it keeps telling me here, hey, if you increase the timeout time, it's gonna affect your battery life. But I've now got that screen timeout set to long. In addition to that, you've got brightness, so it's set to normal right now. Uh, you can set it to max if you want, dim. Uh, when we go into like sleep mode, that's automatically gonna dim down your screen. Screen wake is auto. You can also have it be manual where you're gonna tap it. Auto is gonna give you that when you flick your wrist, that's gonna wake it up. You've got the uh, screen timeout, which we went through, the always on display, which impacts battery life. But if we click on that, uh, it's going to keep a display for the clock face exercise and timers uh, always on, but that's going to impact your battery life. So let's turn that on. And I do want to just show you, it says here, this will turn off at 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. to save battery. And you can modify the time interval in interval if you want. But with the always on display being on, let's if you double tap, that should take you back to the main screen. Um, here's the screen and after it times out, let's see if I put my hand over it and then bring my hand back. Let's see if that will, there you go. That is going to be an example of the always on. So uh, a fraction of what we saw when it was active, uh, it's just gonna be a lot dimmer. So jumping back under those display settings again, we had the always on, which impacts the battery life. That is gonna do it for your display settings. You can move back a menu at any time by just swiping to the right. So now we're back under the main settings. So next you have quiet modes and under quiet modes, do not disturb, sleep mode, exercise, focus. Those are gonna be uh, your different modes. You can go back by just swiping to the right. You can turn your heart rate monitoring on or off, uh, your heart rate zone notifications, uh, you can turn those on or off. Vibrations, so if you want those to be normal, strong, you can change those settings. So next for GPS. So you have uh, three different options for the GPS. You have built-in, which is the built-in GPS on your tracker. So you can leave your phone at home. If you go for a run, it's gonna track your GPS. Uh, and then when you get back and sync it back up with your device, like your phone, then it'll save all that information uh, of where you ran. It's also got uh, GPS where it's gonna, you're gonna save more battery life if you use the GPS from your phone, but then again, you'd have to take your phone with you, say if you go for a run or a workout. It also has dynamic mode where it's gonna check itself to see if your phone is nearby, and if it is, it'll use the GPS from your phone, and if it's not around, then it'll revert to the uh, built-in GPS from the tracker, but it's gonna suck more of your battery out. You can also reset to defaults, and then if you go to GPS info, it just says learn more about these at Fitbit.com. So again, we're going back, going back to the main settings, that was GPS. You have your device info, so we can click on this, and you have system info, regulatory info. This is where you're gonna clear all of your user data if you get to the point where you are maybe done with the Charge 5 and you're gonna upgrade to something else. This is the area where you're gonna clear that data. System info, it'll tell you the activation date, the version that it's running. So if you wanna know if you're running the latest version, this is how you would check that. Again, we're under device info. Um, we're gonna jump back. 
And then if you just want to restart your device, this is where you would restart it. So uh, you have all those different options in these menus. Those are under settings. So again, if you do want to restart real quick from settings, you just go to settings, scroll all the way to the bottom, and that's where you can restart your device. So let's talk about customizing the apps and clock faces and stuff in your Fitbit. You're gonna need the Fitbit app downloaded. When you download it, you're gonna see a dashboard such as this after you've set up your account. Uh, you will have an account uh, button that's up top or icon. And when you click on that, this is gonna give you all the information about your account and you're gonna see the device that is linked to it. In this case, it's the Charge 5. So when I click on this up top, you see all of your information. So your firmware, as well as it'll tell you how your battery's doing. Um, now when I was setting this up, uh, I missed a little uh, notification to click on that allowed me to pair my phone with the uh, Fitbit Charge 5. When I went into this area for the first time, I got another opportunity to do that. So that actually finished linking up my uh, charge five so if you do happen to miss that pairing notification there's going to be more opportunities for you to be able to connect that uh, which i was able to do so this is the main dashboard for the charge five and let's just start off here you can change your clock faces this is how you're going to do that and when you click on this this brings up all the different clock faces that are available and you can see that eh, there's like nine that's about 18. Um, how many, you know, there's about 20 different clock faces to choose from. And if you want to switch to a different clock face, let's say that I'm going to do this intersection, I can just tap on that watch face. It's going to bring up information like the always on stats and screenshots of what that's going to look like to just kind of give you more info on it, even the updates, the versions. But if you want to install it, it will go through the work here of installing that watch face. And let's see here, kind of shows you the updating screen on the Fitbit as it's going through and installing that watch face. And so this took about a minute, which actually seems like quite a long time uh, to update, but it now updated the watch face. So if I double tap on the screen, oh, now it's doing more of an update. Took a couple more seconds, but now I've got access to that new watch face. So let's talk about setting up the wallet so that you can make contactless payments with your watch. So if you want to leave your credit card at home, you can actually store it inside the uh, Fitbit Charge 5. You can do that by going to the wallet area on uh, your Fitbit app. And then from this point, it's walking you through the easy way to pay. Make purchases with the tap of your wrist, leave your wallet at home, and use Fitbit Pay at any store that accepts contactless payments. So we're going to click on Get Started, and then this is going to work on setting up your wallet. So in order to use uh, Fitbit Pay, you must first set up a PIN to enable device lock. And this is putting a password essentially on your Fitbit so that if you happen to lose your Fitbit, uh, uh, or if somebody were to steal it, um, they can't get at your, or they can't use it to charge your credit card unless they know what your uh, PIN is. So we're going to go ahead and set a PIN. And then from this point, I need to choose a four-digit PIN. And then after entering my PIN, it's going to have me re-enter it again. And from this point, it is confirming that PIN. And... Now from this point, uh, I've got an area here where I can add a credit debit card or an iPass uh, for transit. We're going to add a credit debit card. And of course, in order to do this, your bank has to be supported. It says here you can see our list of banks and transits that are supporting uh, Fitbit Pay. And we can just jump into this. And if we jump over to uh, Fitbit's website, it says in the United States, all cards added to Fitbit can be used on, so the New York uh, Metro, Chicago, Florida, Portland's uh, streetcar, and then we have all of our different banks. And I'm not going to sit here and go through all of them with you, but I did just want to show you a brief snapshot. And you can jump over to this list of information uh, if you do Fitbit Charge 5 uh, list of supported banks. If you go and Google that, that will uh, bring up this list. 
So back in the Fitbit app, we're going to tap on credit debit card to add it. And then it's going to go ahead and give me the area to enter that credit card number. And after you enter that credit card number, it's going to give you an area where you can type in the rest of the security information for that credit card. After entering in the credit card information, it's going to have you enter in your billing address. And after I agreed to their terms, uh, it now brings up this where to pay, look for contactless or mobile payments uh, to go ahead and use those. So after entering in my credit card information, my billing information, uh, before it's actually going to set the card up and connect it to my charge five, it needs to verify my identity through either email or text message. So I did uh, set it for text message. It did just give me that verification code. So I'm gonna paste that in to verify. And from this point, it's uh, verifying, and it says here where to pay, look for those contactless payments. And hey, my card was successfully added. So from this point, my card is loaded. I can go to my wallet, and I can see all the cards that I currently have stored in my Charge 5. So you can install multiple credit cards or debit cards in your Charge 5. When you're ready to use them, once you've verified your identity and they're stored in the Charge 5, you can scroll down from the top of the screen and you'll see payments. And then right there in payments are gonna be my cards. I can just scroll up to or down to see the different cards that I have stored. And you'll see at the top here, it's saying hold near reader. With this uh, virtual card pulled up on your Charge five. If you hold this, uh, re if you hold this charge five up to the contactless payment reader, it's going to uh, make that payment for you. And again, you can leave your wallet at home. And I just wanted to show you an example. The first time that you are using the watch when you put it on with the payments installed, uh, or after you've done a restart, uh, is when you swipe down and you go to payments. It's not going to let you access those payments unless you tap to unlock. And then from this point, you're gonna to have to enter your PIN so you can scroll through the different numbers. And then when you find a number that you want, tap, and then you'll just enter in your four digit PIN. So a couple of things to note, if you are using your Charge 5 and it is uh, not syncing up with the information that's gonna be on your dashboard, and your dashboard is essentially the first screen you're gonna see when you uh, go into your Fitbit app, you can resync your uh, Charge 5 with your device by just simply going to the dashboard, pulling down, and then releasing. And you'll see at the top it now says syncing your Charge 5. Sync is complete. And at the time of this recording, since the Charge 5 just came out, it says our newest feature daily uh, readiness score is coming soon. Look for an update in the coming months. Uh, our newest feature, the ECG app, which is another promised app for the Charge 5, is coming soon. So at the time of this recording, that is not available. Uh, and then it also says here that you can protect your Charge 5 by staying on track with two years of accidental damage coverage. Uh, if you are interested in that, Fitbit offers their protection plan. And it does say here that that for two years is going to be $39.99. So something that is noticeably uh, missing from the Charge 5 is any type of Spotify uh, as far as music controls, which was something that was available on the Charge 4 and that I covered in my uh, setup and uh, even did a full Spotify video uh, for the uh, Charge 4, talking a section about where uh, you can control Spotify. It is uh, not something that I can find on the Charge 5, so it is very interesting to me that they would have dropped that feature uh, when that was something that they had on the Charge 4. So if you're somebody that likes to listen to music and you wanted those music controls that are on the Charge 4, on the Charge 5, uh, you actually don't get that option at this time. I don't know if that's something they're going to be adding in the future, but as of the recording of this video, there are no more Spotify controls, which you did used to have on the Charge 4. So you can also go in and customize different settings. And again, from your Fitbit dashboard, click on your account icon, go down to the Charge 5 
uh, which is the device you have connected. And then you'll see under these icons here down below, um, you've got options where you can also sync your device here. You have all sorts of areas where you can customize different things such as notifications. Uh, so you can get notified when you get phone calls, when you get text messages, emails, you can even get app notifications. And if you go into app notifications, you can choose which apps you want to get notifications on your wrist for, or you can do a select all and you'll get notifications of every app that you have installed. Something else that's kind of nice is you have what are called quick replies and you can use quick replies to reply to text messages that you may receive that pop up on your wrist. If you go to quick replies, uh, I suppose you can also use it for your uh, email, but if I click on messages, I can uh, have yes, no, sounds good, can't talk now, we'll reply later, what's up, but I can go in and I can make these whatever I want to customize them. So I could say like, hey, and just leave it at that to have that as one of my custom replies. And then you've got different like vibration settings where you can always send notifications to the tracker and vibrate the tracker even if your phone is in do not disturb or silent mode. Uh, and then there's some advanced settings here uh, which I'm not going to use. In addition to the notifications, you can set it so that you get notifications if you have a high or low heart rate and you can actually turn that on and off and then set that custom uh, for what you want. And here's the different thresholds. Uh, in addition to that, you can get reminders to move and you can choose what days of the week you want to get those and then your start and end times. And essentially, you're going to get a reminder 10 minutes before the hour. If you haven't reached 250 steps, it sends you a little message saying, hey, time to move. Um, in addition to that, you can uh, set your uh, reminders, health and wellness reminders. Uh, so a uh, moment of mindfulness, stay hydrated, wash your hands. Uh, we've got your main goal. So you can set what your main goal is going to be. Steps, distance, calories, active zone minutes. You can choose that. Uh, your wrist placement, dominant, non-dominant. And then device lock. So if you do enter payment information for a credit card and you set that PIN, go under device lock. And then this gives you an area where you can change that passcode if for some reason you wanted to change it. Last thing on our list is this exercise shortcuts. And from here, uh, you have the shortcuts that you're gonna see when you go into the exercise area on your tracker. Uh, if, you know, like right now, listed number one is biking. If I don't bike a lot, and let's say that I run quite a bit, I can actually just hold down these different bars to reorder uh, what order I want these to show up. So now if I like running a lot, which I do, that's gonna be the first exercise I see that I can then tap on to go into that exercise. So you can take the Charge 5 uh, swimming. It is rated water resistance up to 50 meters. It does say on Fitbit's website that you can uh, take it in the pool, uh, you can take it to the beach, um, and it can be used in the rain. Uh, so it is water resistant. Uh, and in order to, uh, you know, if water starts hitting the screen, in order to keep your screen from uh, going into all sorts of weird menus and things like that. It has a water lock feature on it. And you can access that by just scrolling down from the top of the screen. You'll see payments, sleep mode, screen wake. And then right here we have water lock. And to lock, firmly double tap. So I am going to double tap and see if that will lock it. Okay, there we go. Took a little bit, but it is locked. And now it says water locked, double tap to unlock but in the meantime anything I am doing on the screen is not going to affect it uh, let's see if we can double tap it and now it is unlocked and that water lock is turned off so that's how you can do that so two features that are not uh, available at the launch of the charge 5 are going to be the ECG uh, feature where you can put your fingers on the sides and it will uh, give you a reading. That is something that's coming in the future, very similar to the EDA scan that we did. Um, that is something that Fitbit said is going to be coming sometime in fall of 2021. We'll see. Uh, the other thing is they also claim that you'll have a daily readiness score. 
It says do what's best for your body with a daily readiness score that shows whether you're ready to work out or you should prioritize recovery. And that's coming soon. This sounds very similar to, I know on the Garmin watches, uh, they have their body battery uh, which kind of tells you what you are at status-wise as far as energy for the day. Um, that sounds like what this is that Fitbit's going to be adding. The kicker, though, is for the daily readiness score, if that's something you want to take advantage of, you will need the Fitbit Premium subscription, which the nice thing about getting a Charge 5 uh, is that you do get a six-month uh, trial of the Fitbit Premium. And then after that, uh, it is $9.99 a month, or you can pay for it yearly, and it's $79.99. Now, with that premium subscription, you do get more than just the daily readiness score. Just jumping over the, to the Fitbit Premium in the app to show you that you get advanced sleep analytics, guided programs, uh, wellness reports, mindfulness sessions, video workouts, and more. What's nice is you can try out premium for six months and then see if it's something that you want to continue or not. Honestly, for myself, it's not something that I subscribe to, but if it is something of interest to you, something to definitely consider. So lots of cool features on the Fitbit Charge 5, but I'm interested to know your thoughts about this fitness tracker. Let me know your thoughts as well as your questions down in the comments section below. And if you are into these smartwatch reviews like Fitbit, uh, we've got the uh, Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 that was just released, as well as many other smartwatches that I've reviewed, take a second right now, hit that subscribe button, hit that little notification bell, and you'll get notified every time I release my weekly videos. You can also check out some other cool links to some of these other fitness trackers and uh, smartwatches that I've done. There'll be cards popping up at the end of this video as well as there'll be links down in the description below. My name is Jeff. This is Tinker Ford. As always, I appreciate you watching. Be sure to make every day awesome, and I will see you in the next video.